This is A's Cast Live, your comprehensive look at the Oakland Athletics. Rooker, it's a fly ball to deep center. Robert going back at the track. He will turn and watch it fly. And 29 other MLB clubs. Dolis Garcia sends on the other way. That sends Carroll back. He's at the line. Watch it. Acuna, another milestone in a truly historic season. Julio with an absolute nuke out to left field. It's Glaber Day. And like a good Glaber, Torres is there. Join us as we take you inside the baseball universe. From humidors to stuff plus <laughs> to walk-off dingers, we have you covered. Spend your afternoon with us only on 80s Cast Live. Here's Chris Townsend. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of A's Cast Live before the Athletics take on the North Siders. Not the South Siders. Not the East Side. Not the West Side. But the South Siders of she- the North Siders of Chicago, the Chicago Cubs. And you will get to hear right here on A's Cast. Another outing from Shota Imanyaga, the lefty that the Cubs signed out of Japan. It was one of their big free agent signings in the offseason. And high expectations if the Cubs are going to be competitive in what we think, and we have to because Cody's a Pirates fan, we will be following the NL Central this year. And my, I got to pick a team, my Cincinnati Reds. Well, without Noel V. Marte now, they still have a pretty good team, though. Young Cincinnati Reds. I've always said, there's one major city that I've been to that I never need to go back to. That is Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> you know the old saying about Cincinnati, that uh, if the world is going to come to come to an end, make sure you go to Cincinnati, because that won't happen until two years after. <laughs> I never heard that. No. When you go to Cincinnati, like Cincinnati, um, yeah, their styles are a little bit dated. They're always a little bit high, a little bit behind in Cincinnati. My old partner, Rick Buecher, who grew up in Cincinnati, uh, educated me on this about it's just Cincinnati, Ohio. Everything's a little bit, you know, whatever you think's in fashion this year, it's going to show up in Cincinnati three, four years later. <laughs> And when I went to Cincinnati for the first time, I was like, you know what? He's right. They just seem like, you know, haircuts, styles. And this is so judgmental, I understand. But we are a judgmental show. Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. I may go with the Reds this year because I think your Brewers. Bat- I mean, we got. It's this time of the year where there's not a whole lot of good news. Now, I I really want to get into the spring breakout game Uh, tomorrow. I'm super excited as I get on a plane down to Arizona. Johnny and I will call the game after the Giants and the A's tee it up. We will be on after the spring breakout game, which I want to get into. I think it's a great idea. This concept, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be, I, I believe, a lot of people are going to tune into our game on A's cast. These games are going to be streamed all over the place. People are going to be watching these games. Uh, they're going to be televised. Yeah, they'll be on TV at NBC Sports California as well. Are they doing the spring game? Are they yeah, doing the spring breakout game? I, I believe it's Chris Carey in Dallas doing the game. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's 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 exciting. But the reality is, this time of the year, all we get is injury news. Like, you want to be getting news about... Um, Hey, a guy's making the team, this, that, but really it's, you know, like Devin Williams, bad news right out of the gate for the Milwaukee Brewers as they're trying to hold on to what they've had in the NL Central. And he's got back fractures. This guy has probably the best changeup as a reliever since Trevor Hoffman. And he's been dominant. But, you know, it's the one thing when we always talk about, and then we have an A with Tommy John surgery. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Felipe, who pitched for the A's in 14 games last year, is having Tommy John, according to Martin Gallego. So then right before we got on the show, I literally had a another change, one. I had to change the graphic. Not this is just precautionary, it sounds like. But uh, no Miguel Andujar today for, a, I believe it's a calf. Uh, well, hold on, I have it. Um, 
It is, he was taken out of the lineup. He was originally in the lineup. He was pulled out of the lineup, mostly out of precaution for right calf soreness. That's from Martin Gallegos of MLB.com. Calf's no joke. Calf is no joke. Now, obviously, killer uh, Achille, Achilles, it's a tendon, not a heel. We know that. But you do you, you pull out your Achilles, it's a year long. Calves, though, are not obviously as bad, but they can be bad. I, I blew up my calf at one point. It can be it can be a long time, and Aletmus Diaz is dealing with that right now. And for Anduar, who's swung it so well, to earn his right to be on the roster, to go down right now with a calf, because a calf basically is something you just have to rest for a few days. And that's something that you, you know, that's all bad news. That's what kind of sucks about spring training at this time is that everything that you're getting is injury reports. And you, you want to put all these guys in bubble wrap and you want everybody to be ready by the start of the year. But it's just, this is, this is why when someone says, don't tell me the strength of your 26 man roster, tell me the strength of your 40 man roster because your depth is going to be tested throughout the entire season. But yeah, I hate to hear that. Also, we get back to the, uh, a little bit of the panic button with people about spring training. You know, spring training is different for different people. Some guys, especially veteran guys, right or wrong. If, if Stripling goes out yesterday and struggles against the pot, everybody struggled yesterday. Do you panic? And the answer is no. Guys, right now, you just got to hope that they get ready. And when it's time for the season to start, things will be fine. So when you start seeing pitchers who are veteran pitchers with higher ERAs, you know, it's like, oh, you had a stinker yesterday. Do you worry? Well, at this point, you got what you got. You're not turning. I mean, we the team's coming back in a week. What you have there in camp, unless you're going to do a trade like the Padres did, probably the the biggest non-injury news in baseball, Dylan Cease, who has been, you know, Chris Getz, who took over for the Chicago White Sox as general manager for Rick Hahn, and of course, Kenny Williams, a Stanford product. Kenny was the VP or president, whatever he was, of baseball operations. They got blown out. Chris Getz, a former White Sox, or former White Sox, who, who was a player and it was a part of that front office, stayed, and he is now an in charge. Big question has been, when are you going to deal cease? When are you going to deal cease? That's all they've talked about. And he did the, well, we're going to hold on to him. We're going to hold on to him. Well, for four players today, three prospects and a 29-year-old, Dylan Cease is now going to the San Diego Padres. What does that affect? Well, it affects the Padres dramatically. It affects the Padres dramatically because they had lost so many innings off their starting pitching staff from last year. It was something like 640 innings are gone. Well, that's a lot of innings, folks, you got to replace. Does it make a difference replacing him? Basically, you're replacing Snell. Does it numbers-wise really change things? I mean, both guys are not innings eaters. You're you probably get more, you're gonna get more starts out of him. You're still gonna get a ton of strikeouts, you're gonna get a ton of walks, you're not gonna get a boatload of innings, but you will get the starts. It looks good. I mean, it gives you a fighting chance. I mean, other than saying you got a fighting chance, I mean, for him, I mean, cease to get out of Chicago. It's like, well, I, if it was me, thank God, because the White Sox have been a train wreck. I mean, for two years talking about they're going to compete, they're going to do this because the AL Central was very winnable. And the past couple of years, you talk about something. You're talking about a clubhouse and a fit. It just never was a good fit. So to get out of there and to now go to the Padres where you think you have a puncher's chance, 
You know, you're hoping coming out of spring, if you're San Francisco, you're Arizona, you're San Diego, you got a puncher's chance for the division. Likely not going to happen. But then everybody knows you just got to get in. You got to get in with the wild card. Because the Padres, they were one of the most odd teams of all time. Nine and 20. And I just happened because we played them yesterday. I saw the sheet up. Nine and 23 in one run games. Two and 12 in extra inning games. They're like 0 and 11 for the start or forever. Your like front the- office is a dysfunctional family. Thank God Bob Melvin got out of there. Mike Schilt, have a good time. I forgot that he's in. Murphy's in, in Milwaukee. Schilt's in San Diego. Pat That's Murphy right. was in San Diego. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Also the former head coach of Arizona State. Now has been with the Brewers for years, and now is the manager for yeah. the Brewers. But, yeah, it, it, it's – but they've got a shot. I mean, I, I, I'll just say this. I hope someday in my life I get paid a, a ton of money and have a decade of being able to do whatever I want, when I want, how I want, and no one's really going to be checking me if I'm successful or not. I'd love that. A.J. Preller has the greatest gig in the world. I fear, I fear that's where you were going. He never had. What's he won? He's been there 10 years. He has spent how much money now? I mean, you add it up. It's over a billion dollars in payroll. He has spent so much money. He's made so many moves, hired, fired managers. He's done all this, been able to blame everybody else. And the guy's still got a job, and he's still making deals. And he's still unchecked. And the Seidler family, Peter Seidler, the former owner, just passed away who's invested so much money in what? They they had one run. They're a wild card team. They got to the NLCS. That's it in a decade. Man, it's good to be A.J. Preller because A.J. Preller's making a really good salary. A.J. Preller could walk away and never work another day in his life. But he's it's like he's this crazy madman. I'm t- you know what? The crazy madman, because I worked for one, and so did you, Some people in life, and I'm sure a lot of you out there, you have this boss that works super, super hard, always on, always working, and management is fascinated by it at first, right? Look how God, this guy's like a, this guy's like a scientist. This guy works so hard, you know, and you fool him. And then all of a sudden you look up and go. This guy's made a ton of moves and they're terrible. And usually that guy has finally shown the door or he leaves. He he now, it, it's the type of person that's not sustainable in business. So they what they do a lot of times is, is switch from job to job to job to job to job. Do you know who I'm talking about with our? I do, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, at first it's like, oh, look at him. The guys that, that, that look... To, this guy's a mover and he's a shaker and he's this. And after a while, yeah, oh, no, really. And then, I, and then we brought in and there was another guy and he uh, was the opposite. <laughs> and that's my other theory in life, folks. Whenever you have one guy or gal and they're a certain way as management and they don't work out, you then go and hire the absolute opposite. Right. And that's what happened. If you got Jim Harbaugh. The next person you're going to hire is going to be the complete opposite of Jim Harbaugh. It's just the way life works. You hire the opposite of what you just fired or let go. It's just how it works. You're never going to hire or get rid of somebody and then hire someone who's just like that person because it would drive you nuts because you just, if you hired someone who was just like that person, you're like, I just fired this guy and I got this guy again. It's human nature to go with something that's the polar opposite. But they haven't done that. They keep letting this guy, A.J. Prella, keep making moves and making moves, and it's nuts. He's on manager number eight. There's a couple interviews. You don't count interim managers? I mean, it's crazy. And that's one of the things about the A's. Like it, hate it, whatever, you know there's continuity. There's continuity all over the front office. People have been with the A's for a long, long time. David Force has been here since he was in junior high. 
<laughs> Pam Pitts has been here for how long? Uh, it's, she's like, is she the long? She might be the longest tenured. I mean, we couldn't get rid of Steve Vucinich. He was here 52 years. He's still around. We saw him Keith, spring. Keith Lippman was what, 54 years? Yeah. Billy Owens has been here since he graduated from Bellarmine, for God's sake. You're forgetting the legend. You get everybody. Everybody's been around here forever. Mickey Morbido. Mickey Morbido was, I mean, he was Connie Mack's traveling secretary. <laughs> Mickey Morbido may never retire. I'm just waiting for that book. Mickey Morbido <laughs> will be on the beach, Manhattan Beach, where he lives. And there will be no book. I don't think there will be a ceremony. Mickey will just vanish. And you'll be like, this guy worked here for how many? Mickey Morbido is one of the pallbearer, pallbearers for um, um, old Yankee Billy Martin. He still has the handwritten note or the handwritten speech. Billy Martin, when he quit the Yankees, remember that? That, yes, that was a long time ago. I don't even think I was born yet. No, you weren't even close to being born. <laughs> Mi Billy Martin and Mickey Morbido were super tight. So, yeah, Mickey Morbido was there. But the point is, you have this great continuity. Well, you'd think that would be happening under, under A.J. Preller, but that's not the case. It's just an absolute train wreck. I went back to confirm it is eight. Bud Black, Dave Roberts, interim. He only man's one game. Uh, Pat Murphy, now the Brewers, Brewers manager. But he was interim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then there was Andy Green, who was there oh, for three years. Andy Green was so smart, folks. Andy Green was so smart. You're like, who is this guy? Andy Green was so smart that he would take all of the data, right? He'd take all the analytics, and he memorized it and never carried around papers. Once again, people were fascinated by it. They were fascinated how smart this guy is. How'd that work out? He was 274 and 366 in his But he was year. so smart. Yeah. Then there was a uh, inter manager Rod Barajas. Wow, how many games was that? Uh, that was eight. Uh, <laughs> then there was our guy. Then there was our guy, Jace Tingler. Oh, the great Jace Tingler. And then there was uh, Bo Mel, and now Mike Schilt. So eight managers. And how how's this possible? You've only been the GM for ten years. You've had eight managers, and you still have a job. Well, the the, the thing. Where's too, Rick Barry? This is crazy. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Langs, our good friend, put it out yesterday. The last time the Padres and White Sox made a trade, it was when the Padres sent James Shields to the White Sox for Eric Johnson and Fernando Tatis Jr. Big game, James. How did he ever get that moniker? I don't. I, I don't think you really did. Big he game, James. I've always wondered. I don't think I've ever actually did a deep dive into his uh, his playoff stats to get that big name, big game, James moniker. Let's see what his postseason stats were. Big game, James. I mean, it's great to have. You're you're really during. You're going on a deep dive right now. I know, no reason. And his career in the postseason, he was three and six with a five forty six ERA. How's big that? Big game, James. And eleven starts. How's that? A, how's Actually, that big game? I mean, if I think Padre White Sox trades of all time, the greatest would be a man that sits in the booth in Houston. Sparksy? Oh, wow. Oh, Blummer. Blummer, yeah. Big, well, 05. He has a statue. Guy's got a statue. Goes from San Diego to the White Sox. He's got a statue. Jeff Blum, the Cal Bear, the World Series hero for the White Sox. That's the greatest trade in White Sox Padre history. <laughs> Jeff Blum. I, he's got a statue. I mean, it's... it's or he's part of a statue. Yeah, confirmed. He's in a statue in front of... You, what is it now? Guaranteed rate field. I mean, Fernando Tatis is just an overpaid PED guy. Wow. I mean, I mean, he's I, one of he's one of seven outfielders they have playing for them. I mean, so, did, does he look like a three hundred million dollar player now? Seven shortstop. Sorry. Uh, I mean, he's I got ringworm PEDs. Yeah, it's. Um, we'll see how he bounces back this year without Soto in the lineup. Yeah. Wow. Well. See if this is a bounce back year for old Nando. Jeff Blum. Uh, I have a thing on gambling. I know I went on gambling yesterday. I got another thing on gambling today. I don't know if we're, what do we got today? Because we were supposed to have Ed Sprague on today because I want to talk about the breakout game because this is really the coolest thing going in baseball 
where I love the idea. I'm on the call with Johnny tomorrow night here on A's cast where we want, I mean, how many times do we look at the top 30 prospects on MLB for each team? Well, we don't, I don't look at other people's teams, but for our team, you're constantly looking at it. You're constantly talking about it. Guys get called up. Who are these guys? And well, this guy's in double A, this guy's in a ball, this guy, you know, I mean, we got them all here. We got them all in the same spot. They're all in Florida. They're all in Arizona. Why don't we have them play in a game against each other? And obviously, A's, Giants works out hand in hand. I, 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 I mean, you want to get me excited on March 14th? I mean, a regular spring training game right now. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying listening to the games. But you want, I'm excited about this. Like, you know, let's go. Give me some Henry Bolte out in the outfield. I'm ready to go. Echeverria, put him on the mound. Let's get these guys going. I, my, my, my one question is her nays is on the rock. Her nays is starting at short today. And until, until further notice, Nick Allen and the back. I mean, if Nick Allen, knock on wood, but if Nick Allen is not able to go, Hernandez is your opening day starting shortstop. That's that's not a debate. Yeah, correct. So is he going to play in this game? Are you going to play him in the spring breakout when he could be your opening day starter? Uh, I guess we'll find out tomorrow if he's in the lineup. He I wouldn't start. have a problem with it because what's I mean, whether he plays in the game Earlier in the day, Giants and A's, or he plays in the spring breakout game. I don't know if it really matters all that much, but that, that'll that be a question. But I'm excited to see these guys. I'm excited to see, you know, Jacob Wilson. I mean, I mean I've, I've enjoyed it. I've got to call two games where Jacob Wilson has played. I mean, this is, this, this, gets, this is a great idea. And by the way. He's only hitting 462 in spring, by the way. By the way. So just to give you kind of an update on, on what's going on here, the games are going to be seven innings unless the two teams have agreed to nine innings, which we haven't. Our game will be seven innings. Games actually start today. They actually start. We've got, let's, I had the schedule up. We had the team. So you got the Braves against, no, 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 hold on. You've got Reds, Rangers. You've got Orioles, Pirates. Skeens is thrown in that, right? Yeah. You can watch that on MLB Network at 405. So you got Reds, Rangers, you got Pirates, Orioles going tonight. A rematch of the 1979 World Series. Yeah, we it's the last time the Pirates won the World Series. I remember that was the first World Series I remember. So Skeens versus Jackson Holiday. That I saw they've been Oh, that the battle. Yeah. Well, Holiday will actually be playing maybe to start the year. And Skeens still has boxes to check in the minors. I mean, it's awesome. How about that? I wish this was for us. I would love to see this because we've always wondered. Do you know in Florida, in five of the Florida games, they're going to be using the ABS challenge system, the old automated ball strike calls. Oh, I'd love to see how that works. Well, a lot of some guys are used to it. So the size of the strike zone will be determined by 53.5% of the batter's height at the top. 27% of the batter's height at the bottom and 17 inches wide as measured at the middle of the plate. Three batter minimum. There will be no three batter minimum for pitchers upon entry into the game. This will allow clubs to feature as many arms as possible in this showcase format. Player re-entry, kind of like the Otani rule. If a pitcher is taken out of a spring break game, he can come back in later. This only counts for pitchers, not position players, unless an injury requires a substitution. So a two-way player could pitch one inning on the mound, then return as a position player later in the game. That is cool. Yeah, I don't, there's not, I mean, we're starting to see a little bit more two-way players. I know the Giants have a guy, and I think it's Reggie Crawford, so... Um, I think he's on their breakout roster. It'll be cool to see him maybe pitch and then come and then come back in as a position player. If you're just a fan of seeing that, or if you're a Giants fan, but okay, I like that though. We are the only sport that if you get taken out, you can't go back in. 
Uh, confirmed, yes. Right? Has anyone ever thought about that? We're the only sport that says, you were in, now you can't be in anymore. Yeah, the only other time no one ever you, brings that up. Yeah, the only other and the other sports, the only reason you get thrown, you're not coming back is if you got thrown out of the game or if you have a game misconduct in hockey, penalty in football. Like uh, the other night in that Rangers, yeah, the, the guy Devils got game, four game suspension for the Ranger kid, the guy with yeah. the cheap shot artist. Yeah, and there games. were you know that that old segment I used to do on my uh, radio show stories of, and there was blood everywhere. Did you ever hear that? <laughs> no, but that makes. So sense. I I used to do this segment where people would call in. And your story would always end. And there was blood everywhere. And everybody would have these stories. Oh, yeah, we were doing this. We were on bikes as kids. And we did this jump. And we made this jump. We thought it was great. Well, the guy went off the jump. He went sideways, landed right on the handlebars. And there was blood everywhere. There was blood everywhere. Everybody has stories of, and there was blood everywhere. That's what it was like. I was watching the highlights of that game. Once again, the NHL is <laughs> is played by grown ass men. There's a lot of hockey talk this week. I'm I'm kind of happy. I just it. <laughs> grown ass men play hockey. You know, we got baseball players who can't pitch because of their nails. Hockey players play with broken legs, missing teeth. Missing teeth. They don't even tell you what the injury is. They just say it's upper body or lower, lower body. That's my favorite designation. Because they don't want you knowing exactly where to attack the guy. Yeah, you, they don't want you having any. Because hockey players, what, his, he's hurt? Go, 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 go after his injury. You send that fourth line goon in to take the star player out. <laughs> but, but we'll have pitchers. Oh, he's going on the IL. He's got a fingernail problem. That's, a, that, not, that's become a, kind of an epidemic in baseball. Oh, God. But yeah, our sport, when you think about it, no one ever talks about it. We're the sport. You came, you come out of the game, you're done. You can't play anymore. I never really sat there and thought about that. No one thinks about these. I don't know why I'm the only one that thinks about this stuff. Maybe that's how my mind works. But why is it guys come out of a basketball game, they go back into a basketball game. Guys come out of a football game. Guys come out of a hockey game. We have shifts in hockey. Shifts. We all go in shifts. Football, I got offense, I got defense, I got special teams. So I've got three different layers of guys coming in and out. Basketball, starters, I've got a sixth man who I put in a lot. And Jamal Crawford, instant offense, right? I got, I, I got baseball, you come, cool. you come at <laughs> Jamal Crawford. I was going to go Manuel Gino, man, uh, Manuel Gino, if, 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 if I was ever to be an NBA player, which I would never be as a 5'9 guy, but if I was ever, I could ever pick you, you guys would all, oh, I'd be Jordan. I'd be LeBron. No, I'd be Jamal Crawford. <laughs> Jamal Crawford was my favorite. I don't play defense. All I do is I come off the bench and score. I'm instant offense. So you're the reverse Andre Iguodala. I'm running three-point line to three-point line. <laughs> I'm like Steph Curry's dad, Del Curry. Del Curry never played defense. Del Curry played as much defense as I did. Steph Curry's dad just ran from three-point line to three-point line. That's all he did. But that would be me, Jamal Crawford. I don't need – what do I need to start the game for? I'm there in my sweats. It's about six minutes into the game. Townsend, let's go. And I come in, and I'm jacking up threes. Instant <laughs> offense, baby. And then you take me out, right? I don't need to be in there when they're, they're banging and beating I, each other up. I, I'm I, here I'm here to score, baby. I'm a score. I'm more impressed that you think that you're going to come in and just start hitting a bunch of shots. I'm like hitting that. shots. Well, I'm getting my touches. I haven't, yeah, I, haven't, I haven't seen you ball on the court, so I don't know what your game's like. But I'm getting my touches. Just know this. I'm getting my touches. Why is it? We take a guy out and we can't put him back in. It's a question for people that make more money than us. That. No, it's the archaic stuff that never has changed. I took a pitcher out. Why can't I put a pitcher back in? It's ridiculous. Yeah. it's a, We can do that. It happens in spring training, right? Guy leaves an inning, then he comes back later on. I take a guy out. Why can't I have him hit again in the eighth? Well, because the manager's got a matchup. Well, why? Rules are changed all the time. Do you guys realize, for you, for you kids, do you realize back in the day, they didn't even throw the football in what was considered professional. There was no NFL. It was just considered professional football. They didn't even throw the ball. This weird thing came called the forward pass. <laughs> Do you realize basketball used to be in crates? They used to shoot into crates. 
but we evolved as humans. Hockey goalies didn't even wear masks. And they played on ponds. Frozen ponds. But now they play in arenas. I call them barns. I mean, people evolve. Can we evolve, people? Why if I take a guy in the third, I can't put him back in the eighth? Why? Game still, I mean, I still got to get three outs. I mean, the inning shouldn't change. I, I'm only I'm only allowed to play with 26. I do like we can only have 13 pitchers. I wish it would go to like 10. In my world, we'd have 10. Do you like the three batter minimum too? It has not been a factor. I don't even think about it anymore. Clear, clear, but rules. yes, I do. I hate the bring the left manager takes a man. First of all, why the hell does a manager even have to go out to the mound? You can just signal from the dugout. No, I mean, no offense, but Bruce I like Bochy using doesn't... the other three sports as example. Does the head coach of a hockey team walk out onto the ice? Grab a guy's stick and take him off? No. Guys coming on and on and off, on and off the football fields, on and off every play, on and off, on and off. Why do we have to have the old man? I don't even know why the old man is even in a, a uniform. Just put sweats on. Do I need to have Bruce Bochy in uniform, limp out there? I mean, he's got the gimpy knee. He finally got that hip fixed, and Bochy comes out. Bochy's got to get the ball. And then Boats has got a signal. I mean, serious. It's painful just to watch Bruce Bochy in Oakland walk out. God love him, friend of the program. Love Bruce Bochy. But walking, watching him walk out to the mound and walk back, it's like, God, I don't want to get old. Before we get to Jess, I will say. Is I, Jess ready? Yeah, I do like Aaron Boone. Uh, Aaron Boone just wearing a hoodie. And, yes. And, and Put him in sweats. First of all, why does he have to go out to the mound? Just go, you're out, guy, come in. I mean, like, why? why? We, maybe we need to have a show just called Why? Why? Why do we do this in our sport? <laughs> why do we have to have an old man in a uniform walk all the way out? I'm with you. That, it's, hey, it's save time in games. You want to be under two hours? There you go. Seriously. Why does the pitching – as a former pitcher, I hated when the pitching coach came out. He never had anything to say. He never had anything to say. Throw strikes. Thanks. <laughs> Throw strikes. Oh, oh, okay. That's what I need to do. Well, hey, uh, and then you uh, they put their hand over. Well, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. What's Scott Emerson really saying? You're in the heat of the moment. All the infielders come over. What, what's Scott Emerson really saying to a pitcher that's really going to affect what's going on right now? You're wasting our time. And then Delaire is back in the TV truck. Should we go to a break? Should we go to a break? I mean, it's like, come on. <laughs> do we have Jess ready? Yeah. Where are you? At, where are you? I'm at Sloan Park. It's my first time. Okay. By the way, Sloan Park is beautiful. It's so beautiful, and the people are so nice. Um, I I don't know. It's just like a, it's a, definitely a big big league ballpark feeling here, and people that work here love being here. So it's just it's such a good vibe. And like I said, it's my first time, and it exceeded my expectations. Yeah, they're like Cub Spring training. I remember like early in my career, this is a long time, like Sammy Sosa was playing. Um, I they were at Ho Ho Camp. And mm -hmm. I remember I remember showing up and it was slammed. And then like it was like last night or the night before I was watching on MLB Network, their game was sold out, night game. I'm like, spring training for all of us. Our fan bases come down, they enjoy it. Spring training for the Cubs is like a whole different deal for their fan base. Every, just about every game is sold out, hard to get tickets. They're buying merch like you wouldn't believe. And one of the cool things, Jess, and I don't know if you've been, if you haven't been able to do it yet, my recommendation, you got to walk around because they have little things there that are to remind you of Wrigley Field at Sloan Park. They did some really great touches to it. I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel like the just the people working here were kind of plucked from Wrigley and placed here. Um, but I haven't had a chance to do a lap yet, but I certainly will. Um, I wanted to make sure I was here and all set up for for my segment. But it's I I'm really excited to check this place out. And I was just talking to JP Sears, the starter today. I know he he, he likes to talk on his start days. It's weird, but he did it. But he he said this is his second time. Um, you know, at the park today. And he, he complimented it as well. So everybody who talks about this area certainly has a love for it. Yeah. Uh, they've been big time in Mesa. And the minute that 
The Cubs threatened to leave Mesa. Mesa built them a brand new ballpark. Go down the right field line to their merchandise store. It doesn't okay. seem like it, it's like a um, department store. It's so massive. Oh. It's not like you're at spring training. It's you're like, Jesus, this thing's unbelievable. By the way, I'm curious. The automated strike zone that's going to be used starting, I, I believe, in tonight, some of the Florida. We got two games going to Florida tonight, but definitely by tomorrow. The mm-hmm. automated strike zone, 53.5% of the batter's height at the top, 27% of the batter's height at the bottom. What would be your strike zone? <laughs> Non-existent. It would, because everybody thinks that Jose Altuve and I are the same height. He's actually like five or six inches taller than me. I'm very, very small. So my my strike zone's about this big, um, non-existent. Oh, look at the hearts. But no, it's non-existent. And I kind of like it that way. But I think from when, when I played, I would hit balls that were that were very low to the ground. So if a guy got one in the dirt, I was trying to take that thing yard. I'm telling you, your on base percentage would be incredible. I agree. By Ryan way, Noda, who? Ryan Noda, who? What were those hearts? You make a little, you do that, and it just shows up. And you think you, you can do like a thumbs up too on your Stream phone? Oh, no, I'm on my computer. Oh, you did you do that? Yeah. Oh, show Cody. Cody, look what you didn't. Did. You didn't know that you make you make a little heart sign. I don't and then have. I don't have in front of me. I got cameras. Did you see oh. those cards? I did yeah. not know you could do that. We did not know well, you could do that. What else? Could I you use do? StreamYard for my podcast, so I did know that. And I think you could do a thumbs up and stuff too. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure. What is this magic that we don't know about? I'm putting the so thumbs sorry. up. Maybe it's because we're using external cameras. Maybe that's why we can't do it. I mean, even like could do be. Do the heart. Yeah. Well, then your heart the is terrible. Your heart yeah, is I know. terrible. I'm sorry, I'm not throwing heart signs up all the time. Well, with that with that haircut and that heart, you're starting to look like Bieber. Stop it. <laughs> uh, Jess, what do you got for me today? What what are, you, what, are, what are you rolling down there in Arizona? Well, there's a lot going on. You would have loved this. It was probably the highlight of my offseason. I had a really good batting conversation with J.J. Blade yesterday. And I know when he stopped by A's cast, he was talking about the stuff he was working on. It had a lot to do with his hands. And it was a six-inch difference, which doesn't sound like a lot. When it comes to hitting, it certainly is. His approach with his hands toward the ball is night and day. And one of my favorite things, and I know you would appreciate this, is remember the saying growing up playing was a home run's a mistake. And J.J. Blade says that he still uses that statement to this day. He used it in college. He used it during the time with his time with the Marlins and certainly now. And now, of course, after coming off that knee injury, he feels more confident. We just sat there talking shop and he was showing me what the difference was. And he was using his elbow a lot more. And we've all dealt with that. You, he, when he stopped by A's cast, he talked about the uppercut that he was doing and it was making him struggle. The power is something that he certainly wasn't too worried about because he said, you know, I'm hitting home runs during batting practice. So that's certainly a positive there. Um, there's of course a lot of fun family stuff that happened this off season. You and I talked about, it. there was eight weddings this off season from wow. last season, eight, eight? and eight so because i remember one of the wives told me we just had a joint bridal shower in one of the suites at the coliseum there was eight brides being celebrated and i think jp sears himself said he went to what four or five weddings just on his own you know and and he had his own wedding so rooker was there noda was there so that was an a's family affair and uh, Aleta Mestias just welcomed a baby girl three months ago, baby Carmella. Seth wow. Brown and Brittany are five months pregnant with their second boy. Very exciting stuff for them. So there's a lot of good family stuff coming out. A lot of people had fun trips. Uh, most of them, they, they talk to you guys about it. But um, so there's some good fun family stuff. And I had a really good conversation with Brent Rooker today. Basically, just reiterating what he talked about with he's going to, you know, surprise this team's going to surprise a lot of people heading into the season. And uh, he specifically mentioned the bullpen, which was a really fun, not really a fun 
I don't want to say a fun problem to have, but but a first world problem to have where there's some strengths there. Scott Alexander does have an injury that we just found out about earlier today, a left rib stress reaction, and there's no timeline for that. It sounded like kind of a freak injury that it was, a, I don't know if it was a stretch situation, so that's going to obviously hinder the bullpen a little bit. Uh, Trevor Gott's numbers aren't too stellar in the spring, but whose numbers really are. Um, he's ready to get out and get there, and obviously a veteran presence certainly helps, but Rooker just went down the list of all the positive things that are working for the A's right now. And when it came to the opening day starter decision, Mark Kotze told me multiple times to at, really just stop asking him about the opening day starter, which I haven't asked him who the opening day starter is, but I asked about the decision process because it's a fun, another word, first world problem where JP Sears came off a really stellar outing of, you know, those 32 starts. Do you go with the veterans? Do you go with strip? Do you go with wood? Do you maybe just give the ball to Polly B? And then we're starting to figure out the fifth guy there, but that's the thing. It's a JP beautiful Sears, problem JP, to have. Now. JP Sears. I've announced it here. Don't go. You've to announced action. it. I've announced, I, I announced it like last week. JP Sears is the opening day star. But that's the thing. If you are incorrect, that's still an okay situation to have a veteran presence get the, on the mound. I'm right there with you. I would love a JP Sears opening day starter more than anything in this world. And, you know, for today, it's a very simple outing for him. They just want, Cots told me he just wants to see JP get 70 pitches and stay, you know, on that health grind. And um, hopefully Ross Stripling, I believe he has two more outings. He struggled yesterday. If you guys watched that outing, um, uh, I think he had like 13 hits. Um, a, five strikeouts, not quite what he wanted. And I asked him, how are you feeling leading up to opening day? And he said, if you would have asked me and I had a decent outing, I'd feel better. He wants to go meet up with the, with the coaches, well, emo specifically and the catchers and see what's going on there. So he hit a little bit of a snafu as far as that goes. He's confident in that he's calling it a gyro ball. We're calling it a death ball, but that was, it's been a, it's a good conversation with him. And he intrigues me just because he gets off the mound. He he said that it was a little too early to kind of evaluate what was going on. But when he does evaluate some of these outings, he's very analytical and he's really brilliant in the way that he approaches it. And he's been, you know, tinkering with his pitches since the very beginning of his career. So, you know, his mind's going a million miles a minute after an outing like that. So, and Alex Wood I had a great conversation with him just about ball, just about pitching and and he said it's it's definitely a different atmosphere as far as the rookies go. When he got started, there was a lot more hazing townie. There's a lot more stuff these these young guys had Not to deal anymore. with. Not, Not anymore. anymore. And he said these guys kind of have it easy, you know, as far as rookies go. But he did say this is, of course, the, probably the youngest ball club he's ever been around. And and that's saying quite a bit. I mean, he, he, of course, was on the Dodgers squad with Belly when those guys were up and comers. Um, and so being able to kind of see similar aspects to that has been great. And he's really admiring what JP Sears is doing this season. So there's there's a lot of stuff that's been hand. I think I just tacked on to some of it, but a couple of injuries that are happening here and in, in there. I'm, I'm sure you saw the announcement and how Felipe is undergoing Tommy John surgery tomorrow. Um, Miguel and Duhar was a late scratch dealing with um, some right calf soreness. So we'll see what happens there. You mentioned Nick Allen in the, in the back there. Um, he's making solid progress. That obviously makes a big question mark on the left-hand side of the infield, what they're going to do there. I know Abraham Toro, that's going to be interesting. I'm really intrigued with, with the defensive capabilities there because they're not as strong as you would like them to be. Third base is not only a hole that the A's possess. Histo historically, it's probably one of the strongest positions the A's have ever had over time. Defense or offensively, I like I like what he does, but I talked to Cots about it as far as evaluating it. And the competition is still alive and well, even with Diaz getting demoted to triple A. It's it's, you know, Alvarez and it's, it's, it's Toro and it's Hernays, but then there's a situation at shortstop too. So there's a lot of questions there. So I think that competition is going to happen until up, up until the very last moment. And, you know, Hernays comes in as advertised. What a confident guy. And he's fun. I think he's, he's got the A's way, the A's mentality figured out. So there's a lot of good things happening around camp right now. How long are you going to be there? I head back home tomorrow after the games. Okay. I'll see you manana. Yeah. I arrive. Yeah, I'll be there like tomorrow. And it's going to be fun. The spring breakout should be really interesting. I know you're looking forward to that. And I asked oh, Cots yeah. about that today. 
And um, he likes that there's like a showcase for everybody. And the guy, our boy, I met him, Henry Bolte, when he got drafted. And of course, he's a local guy. So we were able to see him. I didn't think he could get any bigger physically. And he's huge now. I didn't know he that was possible. Yoked. I'm telling yoked. you, like he was yoked in high school. He doesn't look like a baseball player. And Cots even said that because, you know, his son Trey is always around the, the ballpark. And Trey himself, who was, I believe, a freshman at the time, looked at Bolte and said, that's what seniors look like. And it's like, nope, but that's what Henry oh. Bolte looked like. <laughs> and and not just offensively, because when he gets a hold of the ball, that thing's going. But defensively, he's showing off his skills, too. And and they uh, Cots talked about that, just how versatile he is and how strong he is, dynamic of a player he is. And he's looking forward to a lot of these young guys. And yesterday's game toward the, the back half, it was all the young players. It was Jacob Wilson. It was all these guys, you know, Muncie and, and Susak. You're seeing all these, these names that are up and coming. And they still were really strong one through nine. So there's positives from that, despite what some of these farm pipeline lists want to say. I think the A's have a very strong prospect system. So to see all of that kind of go together with a very strong a team, I got to be honest, Cods, this is a very exciting squad. And I, you know, we talk about the vibe in the clubhouse. It reminds me of the 2018, 2019 squad with Chappie and Oli and the, the music going and everybody feeling good. That's what it reminded me of. And Max Muncy just, you know, he's playing card games in the middle of the clubhouse and making everybody laugh and Geloff's confidence. We mentioned her nays. It's it's just reminiscent of those Chappie and Chris Davis and Mark Simeon days. And that gets me very excited. All righty. We will see you tomorrow. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the ballpark. Make sure you walk around. Lots I'll walk around for you. I will walk around for you, Townie. No problem. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Jessica Kleinschmidt from Sloan Park. If you are an A's fan heading to Arizona, make sure one of the one of the parks, Salt River, you got to go there. Camelback, you got to go there. I do like Goodyear, where Cleveland and Cincinnati are. It's kind of out there. Peoria, you don't have to go. I've been there. Yeah, don't go. <clears throat> you don't need to go. Sloan, which is not far from Ho Ho Cam, I highly, highly, highly recommend. I'm telling you, there's spring training. As we used to say before the Raider games at the Coliseum, there's 31 teams in the National Football League, and then there's the Oakland Raiders. So I would say there's 29 other teams in Major League Baseball at spring training, and then there's the Chicago Cubs. Know your Cubs today for Johnny. Let's see how he does. I'm just telling you, the Cubs are a different animal in spring training than anybody else. Their fans... Getting out of the cold weather of Chicago, they're like, it's just a, a rite of passage to get down to Mesa, Arizona, where they have always been, and to get out of Dodge, to get out of cold weather and go watch the Cubs play. And it doesn't matter if they're going to be any good. It doesn't matter. These people are showing up for spring training. They all are pasty white. They haven't seen the sun in months, and they're ready to rock. And then after they're there for a day or two, everybody's sunburnt. It's hilarious. It's great. They're a fan base like, I mean, I have no connection to the Chicago Cubs. I have no family connection in Chicago. I've, I've had great times in Chicago like everybody has. The place is absolutely freezing cold or it's super hot. They hardly have any good weather. But I love Chicago, big city. People are great. The people, the food's phenomenal. But I'm just going to tell you, their fan base, you know when people say, they're the best fan base in baseball. I mean, how many times have you heard that? Best fan base of eight. Well, Cubs fans are, they haven't had a whole lot of winning. You put it, wait, wait, they've only been to the playoffs 21 times in 150 30, 40 years. Well, how long is it? How long have they been uh, around? Hopefully Johnny's not listening. Johnny's not listening. That's Johnny, bro, bro. Jo Johnny's somewhere in the press. That was, one of the, that was one of the questions. Uh, 140 been, seasons. They've only been to the playoffs 21 times in 140 years. I mean, the White Sox are worse. I mean, our fan base bitches and complains like you wouldn't believe. And there's, there's you know, obviously a lot of. But when it comes to just winning, think about. It. We've been in Oakland since 68. How many times have we been in the playoffs? I think it's like 20, 21. How many times? Three need... World Series championships. How many times in the playoffs? 
They've been 21 times in 140 years. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, I mean, wow. And the support they have is unreal. People, they, they, they come to spring training like nobody else. Their spring training is a cash cow. 21 times since we've been in Oakland. Okay, we've been to the playoffs as many times as the Cubs have been in 140 years as we have been since the team moved to Oakland. And they've won more World Series than, than the Cubs have. And yet you can't get a seat at their games at spring training. Their games are, they've got left field. They've got like concessions, everything. Then they got people because they wanted to mimic the rooftops of Wrigley. So they got people sitting on top of the concessions in left field. It's incredible. Their berm is always packed. And I'm telling you, their merchandise store does not look like a spring training. You walk in there and it's just, it's Cubs. Like, it's like the Cubby Bear when they're threw up and there's just Cubs things everywhere. Hey! You, uh, you still buy, not Chris Carey, Harry Carey. His great grandfather. I don't want to hear about Chris Carey's got to do a game in the big leagues before I, hey! Uh, I missed, I wish I would be able to see the Cubs play it on Catalina Island for spring training. Have you been to Catalina? I have, yes. Okay, I've been to Catalina too a couple times. And you can you imagine, so Wrigley, Gum, the Wrigley family, own the Cubs. They own Catalina Island. You can take the boat out from either Long Beach or, God, where was it? In, um, was it Dana Point? So either like Long Beach or Dana Point, you can take the boat out to Catalina. It's an island right off our coast in Southern California. And I went snorkeling there and then watched a great white shark documentary about the, uh, they believe that great white sharks may mate so deep. They may mate around Catalina Island and that the Navy seals are taken out and do night swims. It's one of the things to be a Navy seal. You Navy seal, you got to do the night swim. They say, well, no Navy seal has ever been attacked by a great white doing this swim at night. I'm like, dude, I went snorkeling there. But, uh, yeah, they have a baseball field. There's a tour of Catalina Island. There's a baseball field up where the Chicago Cubs used to, whoever they'd play, they'd bring out people to play. The Cubs would actually play some spring training games back in the day at Catalina Island. How incredible would that have been? I got to put that on my list for questions for Johnny. There's another really good one. What on there. California home? What, what, it wouldn't be considered California. What, what island did the Cubs play spring yes. training games? What, 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 off the shores of California. Uh, all right. Um, cause one of the questions, hopefully he's not listening. I was a Cubs broadcaster in the 1930s and actor and then president of the United States of America. The great Ronald Reagan, the governor of California. Yeah. I love, I just love that scene in back to the future. Ronald Reagan, the actor. When he tells him who the president is in 1985, just win one for the Gipper. <laughs> what else you got for know your Cubs? Um, what year was the first night game at Wrigley field? Oh, God, I remember that. It was in the 80s. Correct. Um, make it easy. Year I was born. See how well you I'm know. I'm going to say it's like, because they, because uh, remember in 84 when they were in the playoffs, they didn't play night games. And people are like, so if, if you remember in 84, the Cubs were the big time favorite over the Padres. And then the Tigers got off to that great start that year at 35 and five. Nobody was beating the Tigers that year. That was your Alan Trammell, Lou Whitaker, Gibson, Willie Hernandez coming out of the pen, Jack Morris, Sparky. That Tiger scene was incredible. But in the National League, it was between the Cubs and the Padres. Padres upset the Cubs, but the question was, are we going to have World Series games again during the day? Because we, we were, yeah, folks, we used to have World Series games during the day. But you know what? We evolved. Yeah. Once again, we evolved as a species, and we played at night so everybody can see it. So it's not 1984, but it's in the 80s. I'm going to say, like, uh, I'll go. It's going to. So the Giants, the Giants played the playoffs against the Cubs in 1989, correct? When they yeah. went to the World Series against the A's. Those were at night. Right? Yeah, those are. Yeah. Will, Will Clark hit the bomb yeah. off Maddox. That was at night. It's got to be like 87 or 88. 1988 was the first year they played. It was August, I believe, of 88 when they played it. No, your Cubs. Also, one of them is what? What is the name of the Cubs mascot? But you don't have to answer. We'll see if Johnny the knows. Cubby Bear. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, he's bad with mascots. <laughs> that's, that's very Billy true. Bean, our own, our own William Bean. So years ago, I have one Cubby story, uh, and then I got to get into this. I th- I think it's interesting. I think a lot of you because I'm going to tie baseball in the NCAA tournament together. That's coming up. But years ago, William Bean, my I had a friend who was able to get my mom and my wife, my when we first got married, into Oprah. Remember the Oprah show? How big that was back in the day? You get a car. You get a car. You one. get a car. <laughs> you get a car. Yes. So they got to go to I'm Oprah. I'm familiar with the show. So my, well, my dear friend, Felicia, who knew somebody who worked for Harpo, was like, hey, and she, I grew up with her, and she was really good friends with my mom. She goes, tell your mom I can get her into Oprah. So I was like, mom, shoot, can get you into Oprah. So my mom was like, you can get us into Oprah. We're there. Well, my dad goes, well, if they're going, why don't we go? And I was like, that's a great idea. So as you know, in life and many times in my life, if I need something, I go to Mr. Billy Bean. (laughs) Hey, Billy, my dad and I are going. And can you, can you, can you get us some seats, some good seats for the Cubs? I can't remember who the GM was at the time. God, who was the GM? Billy Bean contacts the GM. Man, he got us right behind home plate. My dad and I, Wrigley Field. Sean Estes pitching. It was the first game of the uh, of the um, of interleague play that year. So it was White Sox Cubs. We're taking that red line from Michigan Avenue down down to Wrigleyville, and it was a, it's a party, man. My dad and I drank at every bar. We were at the Cubby Bear, and we went to all the different bars. And then it was, you know, they bring beer to your seats because, remember, what? they didn't do that back in the day. They they used to do it years and years ago. Then they stopped it. Now we do it again. But in California, they used to not bring beer to your seats. You had to go up and get it. But you're like, old style, yeah, I'm in. And uh, Great, great choice on the beer. And... Sean Estes gets blown out. The Cubs rip him. And I've laughed with Sean about it over at NBC a few times. But my dad and I cruising around Wrigley Field back in the day. It's awesome. So Estes was a Cub in 03. So you would have went through the year they went to the World Series. And their GM was Jim Henry. Jim Henry. That's right. So I got I actually got the tickets from Jim Henry, who was the GM, because Billy Bean hooked it up. You wonder why I'm so loyal to William Bean? Because William Bean's a great friend, and he takes care of you when you need it. The great William Bean. And yes, you don't build a team with a computer, Billy. That's good, yeah. It's very true. You don't put a team together with a computer, Billy. All right, what, what, uh, what, what, what? What time is? It? I've lost track. Eleven fifty-seven. It's eleven fifty-seven. All right. Coming up next, we'll give you who we're most excited about for tomorrow night. So tomorrow's schedule, by the way, programming note, um, I'm on a flight. I land at 1045. We don't say Phoenix time anymore because we've caught up. And then I'm going to hustle to the ballpark. Maybe we get on at 1130. Maybe we get on at noon. Maybe. That might be when we can get Ed, Ed, Ed Sprague. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah, I can. I mean, I can ask because then you could cut it up for the broadcast. You'd have a couple hours. We're trying to get Ed Sprague on today to talk about all of our guys, the spring breakout. Uh, Jess, Jess mentioned something and then it, I sparked, it sparked a thought. Who's managing the team? That's a good question. I don't know. Would it be like maybe a minor league manager? Would it be Fran? Can we? Can can we sports invest on this game? Because if if Fran Reardon is leading this group of men, it's a done deal. It's a victory against the Giants. I can. You want me to text a source and see if we can find out who it is? I don't know what kind of sources you have because I these guys on YouTube used to have sources. Now they don't have sources. Now they're back to having sources. I, do you have sources? I know some people in the building. Okay, so who's leading this group? Because if it's Fran Reardon, it's a done deal. We're going to wax their ass. Book it. You don't beat Fran Reardon with a group of hot shot prospects. He'd say that. I mean, that's that's like going up against Tyson in his prime. Leader of men. You put a leader of men with highly motivated and talented young men, there's nothing you can't accomplish. 
That's Fran Reardon. I'll, I'll see who. I'll see if I can find out who's managing. Fran this Reardon team. was once a manager of the greatest offense in the history of baseball. Fact. Check they, the stats. Look at the 19 Aviators. <laughs> Check the stats. It is true. It is true. Reference of the great Mike Gundy. I'm a man. I'm 40. It's true. All right, coming up next, who we're excited about for the breakout game, and I'm going to – why baseball needs to go full-on embrace NCAA tournament. How is he going to do that? How do you take college basketball, Major League Baseball, and put them together? Next on A's Cast Live. Hey, Oakland A's fans, join your team this spring in Mesa. With nonstop flights direct from Oakland, there's never been a better time to head to the Southwest. Surrounded by this stunning Sonoran Desert, spring training fans know why Arizona is the perfect spring break escape. Miles of trails, shoreline, and sunshine combine for an unforgettable Arizona adventure. There's simply no shortage of things to do, see, and discover in Mesa. Get your visitor's guide at visitmesa.com. Nestled in the hills of San Jose, minutes from Silicon Valley, Cinnabar Hills Golf Club offers 27 holes of championship golf, first-class pro shop, practice facility, and great food in the grill. This time of year also means family and business get-togethers. Let the folks at Cinnabar Hills make your event unforgettable while enjoying their award-winning venue. It's all there for you, championship golf, a great space for any events, and incredible food. See it all at CinnabarHills.com. That's CinnabarHills.com. This is Chris Towns, and there are two things that are a must for me, comfort and style. Whether I'm playing golf, going to dinner, I've got to have the right feel. That's why I've partnered with Link Soul, and you're going to love Link Soul. They have just released their new spring line, new fabrics for their polos, lightweight and perfect for technical performance. Link Soul also has new styles for their layers and hoodies with cool prints and seasonal colors. You know what they say in the big leagues, look good, play good. Go to LinkSoul.com. That's LinkSoul.com. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is the number one brand of online mattresses and the Bay Area's favorite mattress store. Take home the Easy Breather Pillow. The New York Times calls it their number one pick. You can navigate their easy news website, nestbedding.com. That's nestbedding.com. Green and Gold fans, use the coupon code Oakland and you get 10% off your entire order. Nest Bedding, love where you sleep. Ever since we got Xfinity, we have Wi-Fi all over the house, even in my hiding spots. Ha! Found ya. How? That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity. Now through March 21st, get started with 200 megabit internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and get Wi-Fi equipment included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless bill and auto pay stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply to internet service and Wi-Fi equipment. Actual speeds vary. A's general manager David Forrest was on A's Cast Live during the winter meetings and explained why the team was moving Mason Miller to the bullpen. Mason's tried starting now over three years, minor league, big leagues, keeps coming up with something, and uh, we're going to try the pen. And, and, you know, to Mason's credit, he's open to whatever. He's obviously a little disappointed. I think everybody wants to be a starter when it comes down to it. But, but I mean, he, you know, obviously, like you said, with his stuff, he could have a really impressive career in the bullpen. But we told him this is not permanent. Like, go out there, let's try and keep healthy for a year that's got to be the first step that way you help yourself you help the team and then we can reevaluate you can watch the full interview at youtube.com slash athletics or listen at athletics.com slash a's cast if you're looking for a great place to eat and watch games go see our friends at the chicken pie shop of walnut creek the Chicken Pie Shop is one of the hottest restaurants in Walnut Creek. You're not going to find a better menu and come try their world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 86 years. Spacious indoor and outdoor dining, perfect for your next private party or corporate event. Don't forget free parking. For more information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. Is convenience a state of mind or a real thing? At Extra Mile, it's a real thing, and it's in everything they do. The stores are spacious, organized, clean, and well-lit, so you can get in quickly, get what you need, and keep going. 
It's just what you'd expect from a place serving up the hot and fresh food and snacks you love. So treat you right and check out Extra Mile's fresh take on the convenience store experience. Extra Mile convenience stores at select Chevron and Texaco locations. Nick Allen joined Townie on A's Cast Live and discussed the conversation he had with his teammates regarding 2024. Rooker came uh, to, I mean, Geloff and uh, and I a little bit, I mean, last year, but he was just like, we can't do this again. You know, we got to find a way to really work our, you know, tails off to get better and put us in a better position. And then, you know, Zach and I always talk about, we were like, sink or swim, especially in our division, you know, so we got to find a way to make it happen else you know it doesn't happen so that's just our i think that's hopefully our going to be our motto but we just got to obviously take it day by day and just keep getting better you can watch the full interview at youtube.com slash athletics or listen at athletics.com slash a's cast And the underdogs, Oakland Athletics, win their first championship since they were in Philadelphia in 1930. Hi, I'm Raleigh Fingers, Hall of Famer, three-time World Series champion with the Oakland A's, and World Series MVP. Winning takes teamwork, skill, and heart. So when you need an ace for a personal injury lawyer that will win you the game, go with the winning team. Call Venardi Zarata at 833-VZ for me or go to vzlawfirm.com. Bernardi Serrata, the official injury law firm of the Oakland A's. Like sports, business is about winning. Championship decisions are business decisions based on what it takes to help your company win. And that's why there's UBO Business Services, specializing in helping you win every day by streamlining workflows, managing documents, and providing the best-in-class office technology. Make your championship decision with UBO Business Services. Visit them at ubeo.com. That's ubeo.com. If you're looking for the latest green and gold gear for the 2023 season, then look no further than athletics.com slash shop for your officially licensed gear. That's athletics.com slash shop. The A's YouTube page is your go-to destination for A's video content. Get access to great highlights, exclusive behind-the-scenes content, classic games, Ace Cast Live, and more. Visit youtube.com slash athletics. Streaming from the studio, Ace Cast Live continues with Chris Townsend. So you now see my dilemma, Cody. I'm going to do it again. I got to reset my Twitter password. But by the time they send the email, it's Twitter's like, oh, that's too late. You now see it. We The kids call it X. But... No, they don't. No one calls it X. <laughs> and when people call it X, it seems odd. I know. I still call it Twitter. I hate calling it X. Yeah. Because if I, I'm sending a text to someone, I'm like, oh, yeah, so I was on X. And it's like, oh, wait, so you think I was on a, a legal narcotic. Great. Not a narcotic. That would be a porn site. A narcotic would be a drug. That's what I said. A narcotic. Oh, oh an X. Oh, it... Okay, I got you. My bust. <laughs> like, that's what I, I think when I'm like, Ecstasy right. is an X. Yeah, yeah. I, I sent it to my parent, my mom and dad. I'm like, they probably think I'm talking about some drugs. Is he now on drugs? That's all I need to worry about. Cody's now on drugs. So yeah. there were eight eight weddings in this offseason for the A's, Jess told us. Well, I think I need I gotta do about I gotta get married six more times to catch up. Well, I tell you what, I like it because now all of a sudden you got a little more purpose. When you get married, you get a little more purpose in life, right? Because now it's just not all about you. Even to say not that you didn't love your girlfriend, you don't love your parents, your brothers and sisters, and all that kind of stuff, but all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm married. Like life's different. And, you know, you start thinking about a family and you start thinking about the same. It kind of you grow up a little bit and you're seeing that with our players. I, I know some people. I there's a lot of people making opinions who aren't really following just the players in the team. And it's unfortunate that. Our media, 
has been like this for a long, long time. Our, and I've been in the Bay Area media now quite a while. And I could even throw it out to Warrior fans, to all our great Warrior fans out there, because they remember what the Golden State Warriors were like. Were they a train wreck under Chris Cohan? Sure. But still, it was a basketball team. Bobby Rowell, if people remember those names. They were still an NBA team, right? And Warrior fans still cared. But the Bay Area media, just all they did was, because it was easy just to take cheap shots. But it still, actually had a conversation yesterday. Dave Del Grande, he's in the stats thing now. Dave used to cover the team. But, and I remember, you know, because I did some pre and post when I was at KMBR. Before I did Warrior stuff at 95.7 The Game, I did some Warrior stuff years ago at KMBR, and they were bad. But they were still an NBA team. These are still players. These are still coaches. You still have to cover the team. And we lack that in the Bay Area media. It's just, it's, it's a reality. When the 49ers are bad, when a team is bad, and things are not going the way they think it should be going, it now becomes about everything other than let. what about the actual players? What about what actually is going on on the court, on the ice? Look at the San Jose Sharks. In our sports media now, they are non-existent. It's like the Sharks don't even exist. Back in the day, if the Sharks were the President's Trophy or they're going the Stanley Cup or whatever, like everybody was all on board. It is such a front running when the team's going well, everybody's on it. And when it's not, you know, the narrative a lot of the times will be about stuff that's not just actually about the players in the games. Well, somebody still has to do and cover the teams. And there, there's there's an article that you started reading me about it. And Scott Osler wrote this thing. It was just it's a ridiculous article. I mean, I, I get I guess we got to we got to produce content. But it's like last paragraph talking about, well, if anybody makes any money, the A's will get like, what are you talking about? Well, when you don't follow the team, you can't do that. In we we are a big market, but we don't act like it. Like no matter how bad things get for the Mets, they still got to cover the team. Right. No matter how bad things get for the Chicago White Sox, they still got to cover the players, the teams, the games. You still got to cover the actual sport to where the Bay Area does not do that as a major market. The Bay Area, if you're not doing well, you're not going to you're not going to get that kind of coverage. You'll get a lot of the stuff that's away from the field about ownership, GMs, people running it, crapping on it. It's easy to crap on it. Go after it. But the actual playing and I know that if you're a longtime Warrior fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because you wouldn't have a whole lot of coverage on the team. It would just be the beat writers. Like everybody else wouldn't even really deal with the actual team. Does that make sense? Yes, I know exactly where you're coming from. Not just from our perspective, because I've been around it for not just with the A's, but my time before. But also with the Sharks. I mean, exactly what you're talking about with the Sharks. As someone that on the side for fun writes about the Sharks, like, the Sharks have like two writers, three writers. And he, oh, but back in the day, everybody yeah. was just, oh, Jumbo, Patty Marla. Everybody was loving it. I remember when we worked at 95.7, there are people who didn't talk about hockey ever. Like, hey, I need a credential for the Stanley Cup. Of course, yeah. you want to come see the Stanley Cup. Exactly. When exactly. there are people that actually care about hockey and want to cover it that are but what they want to go. In legit big markets, those teams get covered. Oh, yeah. You think hockey's going to get covered in Boston, Philly, New York? Yeah. I mean, even e even if a team is bad, New York, they get covered. Like the actual team, like what's happening with the games, what's happening at their spring training, what's happening? It's just not all. Let's just let let's crap on whatever the bad na narrative is because it'll get people to read the article. No, they'll actually cover what the team is doing, good or bad, good or bad. And if your narrative on us is that. Enjoy the team now because they'll get rid of the players. Like who? A Letmus Diaz making eight million dollars? Like, oh my God, you think getting rid of a Letmus Diaz? No offense to a Letmus, but a Letmus Diaz? That 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 would that to you would be like a roster dump? 
Are you serious? I mean, you added a couple of guys like Wood and Stripling. I mean, we're not. This is not like, oh, you're going to get rid of Giambi or Tejada. No. Our best players are younger players. They're exciting players. Those are who our best guys are. And they're not going anywhere. They will be here this year and for years to come. There's something being built here. Now, if you don't want to participate in it, you don't want to follow it, you don't want to cover it, to each zone. But for us that are in it and living in it, it's kind of like, you know what? Hey, bozos, get out of the way. Take it somewhere else. Because you know what would happen. What happens every single time? Everything's negative, everything, and all of a sudden a young group comes together and starts winning. It happens every time. Doesn't matter what, doesn't matter what's going on. Doesn't matter how bad the narrative gets. Doesn't matter what's happening. If a young team starts starts getting energized and starts winning, people get attracted back to it. Well, then those articles come out about, well, when are they going to trade the guys? Oh, what is that? Yeah. you're going to be like, wait, the guy didn't make any money. What are you talking about? I mean, who tried to trade a Lemus Diaz last year? That has nothing. I mean, it's not a salary dump. I, I think I think a good way to look at it too. Where is does it? he play? Yeah, we have, we actually we we have legit. We have a legit roster crunch. Now, I mean, I, I'm hoping Nick Allen's going to be okay. But yeah, Hernandez could be your starting shortstop. Wait, p- put the lineup today. You know, we talked about the other day, like, this could be your line. I mean, Ruiz and left. Okay, makes sense. Rooker's going to be your DH, but Blade in center. And because right field, because it changed because uh, what's his name's out? Miguel Endor had right calf soreness. Yeah, so. Precautionary. So you would have had Rooker at DH, Andujar in the outfield. Perez wouldn't have been DH. Correct. So that to that lineup right there that you're looking at, if if Andujar didn't go out today and he was in right and Rooker was at DH, that could be a legitimate lineup that you see early on in the season. What you're looking at right there, right? Yeah, I agree. I I mean Toro at third because you got a lefty going today, and and uh, Herna, uh, Hernandez at short because we, we don't know about Nick Allen. Shota so. Imanaga and lefty on the mound. Yeah, you got a lefty on the mound, so you're looking. And there's only two lefties in the lineup for the A's: Noda and and Blade, and Toro's a switch hitter. So against a left-handed pitcher, this is who could this could be a lineup. I mean, there's things to talk about. And I get it. You want to live in the other world, and we're not disparaging anybody. Yes, stuff needs to be covered and everything. I get it. But if you're going to write articles and you're going to kind of write about the team, but you're not going to write about the team, it's 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 weak. It's weak. Yeah, or like, like you either know, cover it or don't. Like look across the bay at the Giants. They've had some. Uh, um, I just and you know what I'm saying. This is as a sports fan. Like like at some point, there's there's so many things going on in our world right now. If if you're just doing kind of blah content, why? I mean, first of all, if you're if 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 you're an editor for the Chronicle, are you looking at this going? This is what you're putting out? Yeah, this is the best we got. The, you, want, you you wonder why everyone's dropping papers left and right, and why the industry? I mean, people don't. You know, you 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 need to you need to put some really good effort in. If you want people to buy into your stuff, you got to have quality content, man. You got to put out good stuff. And I'm just saying, you know, I mean, yeah, you can get a lot of clicks on the outside stuff of the A's. Totally understand that. I taught, and I'm not, we don't talk about it. We don't talk, we talk about the team. But if you're going to kind of put your, kind of put your toe in the water a little bit about the team, but then reality, we know you know nothing about the players. You know nothing about the players. You know nothing about what's going on. Yeah, to give context, the article was about how the A's could be more exciting than the Giants, even if they don't win as many games. Like, really? This is that? That's that's what you got, huh? That's that's what you worked all day on. <laughs> I mean, my God. 
Seriously. Should be writing about how the Giants claim they finished second. In the you zone. only live once in your life, and that's the article you're putting out, huh? That's should write about how the Giants finished second in the Dylan C sweepstakes. So now it's second in him, second in Otani, second on Judge, Harper. Well, that 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 is the age old. Um, I'm not going to put a lot of work into something, so I'll just compare the two market teams. <laughs> I'm 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 excited to hear about your. NCAA tournament. Yeah, let's get into something that's actually interesting. Hey, how many times? I mean, if you if you threw that thing out there in New York, Mets Mets Yankees. Can oh, you the- imagine? Can you imagine a, a, a fluff, nothing, no content piece like that going out in New York with the competition that is the content, the competition for the eyeballs, the competition to have people participate in your product. You threw out something like that in New York, it would just get shredded. I could see now. You might say any any feedback is is good, even negative, but you would get you get roasted. I could see it right now. Get that garbage out of with here. Cole being out. I could see it right now. Why uh, Jose Quintana starting an opening day for the Mets is more exciting than Carlos Rodon. But they would actually <laughs> break down the teams and numbers, and they'd give you substance. All right. I understand leagues, what they want to do these days and how we have initiatives and we have this and we have that and we're building this and we're building that. But folks, you want to get people interested. You want to get people, you want to get more people truly interested in what you got rolling. Get a load of this. Nobody watches college basketball until the tournament. The numbers for regular season college basketball, most of these teams play in college towns. You don't have big numbers. They air the games on Saturdays. I mean, it's like how many times you see it's a college basketball game on CBS than a golf tournament. It's just it's the West Coast swing. It's college basketball and the West Coast swing. So they're either playing at Pebble Beach or they're playing down at uh, Torrey Pines or they're playing Riviera in L.A. or they're playing out at TPC Scottsdale. It's the West Coast Swing, and it's college basketball. Every Saturday, CBS. But all of a sudden, the tournament comes, and it completely changes. Did you know that in Vegas and in gambling, that the NCAA tournament dwarfs the Super Bowl? I did not, but I could kind of see why it would. One game versus a ton of games, right? Check this out. And this is how baseball, which once again, needs to start embracing different things because there's, there's, whether you like it or not, there's things human beings are attracted to. We as human beings like to watch games and we like to watch games with a little bit of action on it. And that action can be a lot of different things, right? Fantasy football. People people love fantasy football. And they're not doing it for the money. They do it because they like that they got a team. They can watch games. You feel like you have ownership in this game. Because let's say the Ravens are taking on the Jets. And I've got a I got a Jets running back. I got a Ravens wide receiver. Normally, would I care about this game? Probably not. But now I care because both these guys are on my team. Or tonight it's going to be the Vikings up against the Texans. And I'm going up against Whoever's on the uh, CJ Stroud, I'm going to CJ Stroud. I'm going up against a guy who's got Stroud as the quarterback for the Texans, right? You've got something. You're invested in the game. And sports gambling for so many years was taboo because you had to have a bookie and uh, it was illegal. We got to get with the times, man. People like to have five bucks on the game, 10 bucks on the game. I remember years ago working at KMBR. We used to have the sheet, and everybody would put in a couple bucks, whatever it was, and everybody would pick games each week. And then at the at the on Monday, or actually on Tuesday, Bob Agnew, our old program director, would hand out the money. Whoever won, whoever picked the picked the best of the games, right? And the Monday night football game, you put the final score of the Monday night football game was the tiebreaker. It was simple. It was a pool, right? We love that. And the NCAA tournament now has gotten to be so big. The television money on CBS is so big, but the gambling is unreal. How do you not want a piece? 
How do you not want to? I mean, it because you've never embraced it. You've been afraid of it. You did the stupid Pete Rose thing. It's just, it's like you've never embraced. It's going to be estimated that $2.72 billion will be wagered legally. $2.72 billion are going to be wagered on the men's NCAA and women's basketball tournaments and American sports books. That's legal, according to the American Gaming Association. That's legal. There's action. It draws people in. I'm sorry. People like to drink. We banned alcohol in this country at one point. That's, it's called prohibition, but yes. I mean, seriously. <laughs> It's hard to believe, but yes, we did ban alcohol. I mean, we we like our vices, man. We're human beings. We like vices. You want to get people into baseball? Figure it out. Because fantasy baseball is too much. Fantasy baseball is every single day. You got to be checking rosters. You got guys like Cody who sit at home all day long on a computer and he's finding out who's coming up, who's not coming up. He's stashing guys on his roster. The average guy's got married. He's got kids. He's got work. He's got, he can't sit on his computer all day long and see what guys, what, what, what prospects coming up in a week. How many times have you stashed guys? We have a, the league I was in before we had a, uh, a spot and a non-active spot where you could pick a guy that you knew was going to come up somewhere. Like like years ago, I had I would have like Tatis or something on my team. Seriously, but tonight I can somehow get involved in the game. I get involved. It changes it. It really, really changes it. How do we do that? Can you imagine how different baseball would be? It would be. I mean, just just think about how big the NCAA tournament is ratings, gambling, people love it. People can't get enough. It's, it's that, that first opening opening Thursday through Sunday, it's the biggest weekend in Vegas for, for sports gaming by, by loads. People come in from all over the country because they want to go to, and it, and also Reno, Reno's big. I, I know guys who do the Reno trip. I think it's I think it starts next week because conference tournaments are going on right now. So I think it's next week when it yeah, starts. Yeah, congratulations to our St. Mary's Gales and the great Alex Jensen. Uh unfortunately it happened last night. Our Spartans will not be winning the uh, Mountain West. They got knocked out by the Colorado State Rams. How about that how about that New Mexico program for just to, to, to scratch the lair a little bit? How are they doing? Uh I'd have to look at the I mean they were when I saw Joe Lenardi's last four out, they were one of them. Where, where They're are, on the bubble. Where are Gales going to be? What seed? Uh, five. I mean, they can they, we get a five? I hope so. They won the conference tor- regular season, and then they won the conference tournament, which is that's big for St. Mary's. And they took down the Zags two two out of three times this year. But do you see where I'm going with this? Two point seven two billion is going to be gambled legally on this. That's billions with a B. With a b b b b b b. It's a lot of money. This is the action, man. This is the, this is, this is, I know the Mets are trying to do something with some type of gambling area around their ballpark. I mean, isn't, isn't Cohen trying to build a casino? Or yeah. Something? I mean, dude, well, I mean, it's 2024. I thought Wrigley was trying to open a sports book in the, it, uh, the Cubs are trying to open a sports book at Wrigley or someone was, that was a couple years ago though. I mean, every single time I see them run a PSA, the NFL is planting trees that I do. Nobody cares that the NFL's planting trees. People want to bet on football. You can bet how long how long it'll take for that tree to grow. Seriously. There you go. What's the coin? I just gave up? you a prop bet. I'm betting. It's heads or tails. I want to bet. We bet on what color the Gatorade they pour on the coaches. We don't care that you have an initiative that you're doing blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's great. We, I'm glad you do that. You're helping people. But come on. Let's be honest. What do we want? Big one for me is the over under the national anthem time. We want some juice on the game. Reba McIntyre went the over. Damn right she did. And why do I know <laughs> that? Because that's what we care about. Not the NFL has an initiative. To blah, 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 blah. Yeah, man, what? To get in the game. You want to have people like just loving this? I'm telling you right now, we need to figure it out. There's all these things. We need to be commissioner for the day. 
I'm getting gambling in there. I'm changing a bunch of the rules, and I don't care what the old guard thinks because you know what? The old guard's bad for business. You should bring it up with Johnny when he comes back uh, about the um... – Johnny, Johnny, Johnny knows what I'm talking about. But, but bring bringing the guys back, uh, bringing guys back in a game at the game when they've been taken out. Yeah, who said? Like, who came up with that rule? Can yeah. you? Could anybody even tell you who came up with that rule? Probably not. Not that I know of. But this number is just astounding. If you're betting 2.72 billion, how many millions of people are wagering? Which means how many people are interested? There's 1.4 billion bet on this past year's Super Bowl. 1.4 billion. What do you think's bet on the World Series? I'm going to go not anywhere near that. I mean, would wouldn't baseball really want that kind of interest to have that many people interested in its World Series? Uh, you would think so, yes. Right? Now that we've added more playoffs and more teams. So who is this guy for? Is Johnny there yet? Uh, no, he asked me to resend him the link. Okay, who is this guy? Dave, For- Dave Foreman, head of research for the American Gambling Association, the Washington, D.C.-based lobbying group that represents the casino industry. He says, quote, March Madness is the biggest and most mainstream betting event of the year, especially with brackets. How many people fill out brackets? One year we did a thing when we were working. My kids filled out the brackets basically off the mascot. Co- off the mascots. Yeah. My wife and her friends do that. Right? Do you think Johnny's here also? Do you All think right. Johnny fills out with the mascots? Hold on. A, a report from the research firm Eilers and Krejcik Gaming released this week's estimates that 35 to 40% of the amount bet on the men's NCAA tournament will come from in-game wagering. In-game wagering is we first got it in football. We may have gotten other sports. I just knew about it in football to where – as the games, because for all those years, you could only bet before the game and at halftime. Well, all of a sudden, you can now bet as the game is going on and the odds are changing, right? And points are changing. Over and unders are changing. 35 to 40%. That means people are watching and gambling on the game as it is being played. You don't want that for the World Series? You don't want that for the NLCS and the ALCS. Ah, oh, gambling's horrible. You, this is the partition of what Americans want to do. Americans want to do this. And we've been figuring out how to, I mean, baseball, you're doing deals with DraftKings. That's gambling. I mean, you got to figure out a way to get a part of this action. Let's go to the great Johnny Dosco. Johnny? Yeah, the yeah. in-game gambling. Tony, wow. I, I, let's talk about it. Well, I, I just, I know everybody's taboo and you're like, you got to get with the times, man. So this article has come out that they estimate 2.72 billion what, will what? be bet on the NCAA tournament. That's Maybe. way more than the NFL. NFL, the Super Bowl, just we're talking about your, your championship, right? Uh, and it's kind of not fair because the tournament goes for a while. Super Bowl is one game. But there was 1.4 billion bet on the Super Bowl this year. The tournament will will way outdo the Super Bowl. It is the biggest event with gambling it, there is, and there, everybody has pools, it brackets, all that. But that in game gambling is interesting, you know. Look, and I think when we get to a point in baseball, and I'm asking this question, I'm not making a statement. When we get to a point in baseball where you literally have ways you can gamble at the ballpark, live oh. betting. Live betting baseball, not just yes. just not just on your phone or computer, but literally have like booths or you know like they have at the racetrack, little stands where you can actually make bets. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't know will we ever get to that, but I, and I don't think America or the world has as uh, an obsessive uh, deal with gambling with baseball as it does with basketball, football, and maybe other sports. But but it, we're you know look, it's still as you said, sign of the times. We may get to that point with with baseball. Who knows? They've never had a chance. Yeah. We don't know. They've never had a chance. 
I mean, that's the thing. It's like, what would it be like all of a sudden here comes the manager and you're like, oh, he's taking him out. And you start, you know, <laughs> you start seeing the odds change and you start yeah. seeing, all, I mean, I, I, it could bring a whole new found group and people and interest into our game. Yeah. All, yeah. all I know is this, all of these people are truly invested in these sports. They're investing time. They're investing money. It's passion. And it's something that our sport's missing that, that we just, we're, we're, we're not, a, we're not getting this kind of crowd. We're just not. And we're missing out as a sport because of it. And do you think it's because baseball and gambling have had this kind of, uh, uh, just very complicated relationship through the years with the Black Sox scandal and with, uh, you know, Pete Rose, all this stuff. Do you think that's the reason or do you think baseball's just kind of scared to to kind of to kind of go there? After Jackie Robinson, if you really look at it, baseball has been the last guy in the pool on everything. Baseball has been scared about everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, look how long it took for just interleague play when all the other sports were doing it well before. I mean, everything you looked at. Overtime rules. I mean, it just everything has changed in all these other sports. It took baseball forever to do any of this stuff. So do I think as it's the Black Sox? I mean, the Black Sox scandal was over. A, it's 100 years ago. It was 1919. Right. Yep, right. I mean, I mean, Pete Rose was the 80s, man. I know. I'm just asking. I'm throwing it out there. I know. We're, talking yeah. 40, we're, we're still worried about the Pete Rose thing. It was over 40 years ago. I know. I mean, how do we not evolve? Like I was saying the, I was saying this, Johnny, and I don't mean to go off on this, but I was like, we still have old men dressed up in uniforms, hobble out to the mound to take, make pitching changes. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. We do stuff. That's just, I mean, you, if, if you actually said this stuff to people, they'd be like, wait a minute. Why, why, why is an old man like Bruce Bochy who can hardly walk? I mean, God bless him. Catching all those years, he's got a two replace hips. He's got a replace knee. He can heart. You see, he's got, he's got a, you know, he hobbles at me. You really have to have this old guy in a uniform, walk out to the mound, take the ball for such. I mean, all the other sports players come on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. What, what are they, we doing? They, they, what change are we the, they change the intentional walk, right? So you never know. I mean, they're, they're Look how hard that was. Look how hard that was. I got another one. I got another one. Why do you take a guy out of the game and he can't come back in? We're the only well, sport that does that. We're the only sport that does that. I'm kind of, actually I'm kind of glad of that, Tony. I, it's spring well, training. I, spring training. I get it. I, 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 Johnny, Johnny, every every other sport and you sports, you sports invest in football. You have no problem with it, but you've grown up with the archaic rules, so we just accept it, and we just accept that's how it is, right? Golf has had this problem now because live golf has come in and golf. Wait a minute, there's no cut. There's always been a cut. You start making changes and uh I you can really like if you really dissected why? What what yeah, but sometimes why Tony, not you, ask why? I, I no, there's no I agree with you. Why not ask why? But I'll say this as far as that rule goes and taking the pitcher out and, and getting him putting him back in, that's the strategy of baseball, right? When do you take him out, right? When you take him out, he's gone for good. So I disagree with you respectfully I, on that. that how, about, how about a position player? Why does he have to not be able to come back in the game? I, and I hate to say that's the way it's always been, but I, I do like that rule. I like I like the fact they can't come in. I, I like. Have you that. ever have you ever watched a season with it different? I haven't. That's no. You're right. No, I haven't. Well, you, then then you don't know. I don't. Well, I do know how I feel about the rule. I do know this. Everybody's into the Savannah bananas. Savannah bananas now because they go. We're going to do everything you don't do. Now that's an extreme. Mm -hmm. But I. I think archaic baseball people do not realize that they work in the entertainment business. They think they're in their baseball bubble world and they're, he's a good baseball man and it's baseball. First and foremost, you're in the entertainment business and too many people don't think about it that way. Because you can't tell me, I don't want to get too much into it, but you can't tell me, I mean, we've seen football and basketball skyrocket. Just saying. Well, I, I I would agree with you on some rules, but that rule about taking the guy out, I, I don't think you're ever going to come into. We'll, we'll argue. You know, you and I are going to be together here soon, so we're going to we're going to get into that debate. We'll get hey, into hey, everything. Hey, Johnny, remember there was never a three point line. It's true. ABA you, had it. Remember the American can, Basketball Association. Can had you it. imagine if we got into a time machine 
and we went way back into time. Yeah. And we said to these centers, where the centers were the stars and dominate basketball, and we said to them, do you realize in the future we're going to have this thing called the three-point line, and small guys will be more important than big guys, and they're going to tell people the further the way fr- the further away from the basket than you are closer to the basket is a better shot. What do you think the old guys would have said if we came from the future and said the future of basketball is shooting the ball further away from the hoop than closer to the hoop? Uh, yeah, well, that that's that's a rule. I understand, but that's a rule that actually improved the game. You didn't know it at the time, and every a lot of people wanted to fight it. Didn't you're know going it. High, you're going high. Going you're right, Jerry West. You're right. Okay, we, right. We didn't we didn't know when some uh, you know Oscar Robertson, Elgin. We didn't know. You're right, but still. I think the three point the three pointer has definitely revolutionized the game, and I think it's made it has made it better. But you're right, though. Back in the day, it was said three pointer. What are you talking about? You're right. It was said you're crazy. You're yeah. absolutely crazy. I, I was joking earlier today, Johnny. Well, before we were all born, they never threw the football. There was no such thing called the forward pass. What was it, mm-hmm. Frankie Albert or whatever, with the Niners and Stanford, the jump pass? They started doing that. To think that you'd go back then and say, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to throw it every down. Guy's going to be a shotgun. We're going to have five wide. They would have told you you're nuts. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Back in the day, it's hard to imagine they didn't have the shotgun back in the day, right? It's just amazing. Joe Montana was never in the shotgun. I know. Amazing. If you would have gone back to Bill Walsh, why? why? No, but he's under center. It's a timing offense. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Brady never even got it at the end of his career. Didn't even get unless it was goal line. It was a quarterback sneak. He was in shock. No doubt. I know. Uh, I what do you got on Nick Allen? He is uh, resuming baseball activity. I think uh, from what Cott said, if my notes are correct, I think he said that Allen will be available this coming weekend. I think he's going to play in the game this weekend. I I hope that's correct. I hope I don't miss didn't misunderstand that. But I think. Uh, he is going to, Nick Allen is going to play in a game this weekend. Okay. So that takes me to her If he is the starting shortstop right now with Allen being out, will he play in our game tomorrow night, the spring breakout game? Is he on the roster to play in that game? Roster, yeah. yeah. That's a good question. Uh, that that's a, that I do not know that, uh, but, but you know, look, it's uh whether her plays third or short, I, I just, I want, I want that bat in the lineup, man. <laughs> You know, I, I love watching that guy play, and, and he's just going to get better and better defensively. You know, he's not going to be Nick Allen defensively at start, you know, the, the shortstop, but but I would love to see him get his at-bats because he, he sure is fun to watch hit, I'll tell you that. Fran Reardon will be leading this team tomorrow night of Ace I, I I think there's no way we lose. That's going to be good. That's going to be fun. By the way, Henry Bolte, by the way, uh, before we start here, Kotze mentioned he mentioned in the in the scrum about Henry Bolte. Henry Bolte had a hard shot. I don't know what it was. Maybe whatever it was, one hundred five off the bat or whatever. And the third baseman uh, made an incredible for the Padres. Made a remarkable play. It was a bang bang play. Made the play. Fired to first, and Bolte beat it. Um, this guy can run. Oh, what an athlete this guy is, Henry Bolte. Oh my goodness. And and uh, and Cots mentioned it today uh, with the media, just how impressive that was. That a hard shot scooped up by third baseman, fired to first, pretty quick release, and he he beat it. It was unbelievable. Henry Bolte is somebody second round pick out of Palo Alto High. We've had him on the program. He is somebody we need to talk. Like fans need to know, local yeah. kid. He's got the body of an Adonis and the face of a twelve year old. It's like. It's it's unbelievable. He's just yoked, right? He's this big yeah. yoked kid, but he looks like he's twelve years old, and he he should be running a, a lemonade stand. I know, and he's got. I mean, not right. only that, but the speed. I mean, that size and that speed. That's crazy. He's 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 uh he's going to be fun to watch, man. He already is fun to watch. Henry Bolte has the kind of face that he's going to be carted at a bar till he's like thirty five. <laughs> oh man, we could be so lucky, right, Tony? Man. Well, I mean, kind of like you, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been carded in 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, you look 35 at, at 18. Yeah, nose and ears never stop growing. That wasn't the best news of the day for me. 
Uh, Andujar, calf out today. Yeah, out today. I think it's day to day, but yeah, calf uh, calf tightness. So yeah, so uh, and you know, look, he's had a great spring, man. He's he's yeah. pretty much shared himself being on this club. He's been uh, fun to watch. Remember, he was runner up in 2018 for Rookie of the Year with Shohei, Rookie of the Year, he uh, runner up there, and he had a great year with the Yankees. So maybe you know he's injury free this year, but you know, a little calf uh, minor setback. But um, he's been healthy this spring, and he's hit well, and he's he's uh, he's been impressive. Okay. Looking at the lineup today, put it up there, Cody. The lineup we're looking at today, if Andahar would have been in there and Rooker would have stayed at DH, this is definitely a lineup you could see against left-handed starting pitching. No question. No question about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Look at that lineup right there. And look, you know, Blade has been swinging a hot bat. I know you want Blade in there all the time. And uh, Blade every, you... every day. Blade every day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good lineup. That's good. Um, Shoto Imanaga, the big acquisition for the Cubs. Yeah. Before we get to know your Cubs, will be on the mound for the Cubs today. He's going today, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him pitch. I mean, they they need him. They need him. You know, with Steele, the number one, they, they have some they have some serious question marks with with uh, Tayon get out for a little while. They don't have a ton of of starting pitching depth, so they 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 need him to have a have a good year you know the cubs are an interesting team because they have a they, they got they have a pretty good pr pretty decent lineup but pitching wise some of those guys and they have some guys coming you know Assad, of course is 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 good and they've got some guys you know that rotation what kyle Hendricks is like a three now um uh wisneski's in there uh so yeah i don't they don't have a ton drew smiley you know they, they don't have a ton of depth so it'll be interesting to see uh the, the kid today how he how he does because they need him you know, one thing that uh, before we get to know your Cubs, the one thing that I wish we would have tomorrow night, because you and I will be calling this spring breakout yes, tomorrow night here on A's Cast uh, in Florida, they're going to be using the automated balls and strikes. Are we're they not, really? We're not going to get that. I'd uh, love to see it. I'd I love know to you do. It. I know. I I saw it, Townie. It, it's a. It's a. I mean. I think ba I think baseball is doing just fine without the ball. The, the major league baseball is doing fine. You're without just one of these old guys that doesn't like change. Just a minute. Tony, I'm not. I I love the pitch timer. I love the pitch timer, Tony. I, I love it. I'm just saying. I oh, just how crazy is that? We got people actually to play at a certain pace. I'm for it. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I, that's not, I, that shouldn't be crazy. Every other sport has a clock. That shouldn't be crazy. Hey, Tony, I watched the uh, ABS. I watched it in AAA. What did and you I saw, like about I it? saw Sean Jelly throw a ball. Sean Jelly, big seven-foot right-hander with the Giants. I, I saw him throw a ball that was literally low and outside to the ground, and it was called his right. He was laughing on the mound. This thing is not perfect. ABS is not perfect. Yeah, and, and, and I can I can show you a video of Levon Hernandez and Eric Gregg back in the day uh, in a playoff not, game that's no even worse than any a, ABS system. I know those pitches were. I, I I understand. I understand that. I'm just saying. I I, I call me an old curmudgeon. I I am not into the ABS yet. Just not there. I'm not there. What, what would have to? What, what would have to? Now I will say this. Umpiring's got a lot better because we've threatened this. If you if, if people have been following this, I I'm not a I'm not a follow the umpire data guy. Cody, are you a umpire data guy? I, I just see the scorecards on, act, on yeah, Twitter. So now that they judge these guys, we've gotten younger. They've gotten a lot of the old guard out, the younger guys. They've trained them and everything. Umpiring has gotten better. It's gotten a little, So I want to give them their due. It has gotten a lot better, but it's because they knew this system was coming. They knew they had to get rid of the older guys who were terrible, and there's still some older guys that aren't very good. We had that one report a few years ago that the outside the lines did for ESPN about how many bang bang plays are missed around baseball. They have they have gotten younger umpires. They've gotten better, but the only reason why is because there's been threats coming on. The change is coming, so sometimes you've got to kick people in the butt to make some change. Well, it's also it's it's the little things with the ABS, right? It's it's the batter saying to the umpire, "Where do you where do you have that?" Or the catcher saying to the umpire. Where do you have that? You know, it's the, it's the, the that communication. I like that part of the game, man. I don't want that taken away with ABS. ABS isn't going to be perfect, just like human beings aren't perfect. And I just don't. I just it has a it has the possibility to be pretty perfect. And the thing is, 
instead of a, a, a catcher asking an umpire and a batter asking an umpire, we just realize a strike's a strike, a ball's a ball. But but that's not the case with ABS, man. I'm telling you, there were there were early. It's gotten pretty. It's gotten better, and it's it still perfect it. They perfect it in tennis with Hawkeye. It's get it, it. It'll get to a point. Technology technology doesn't suck, Johnny. At some point, we'll yeah, figure it out. Okay, let's say the technology's perfect, and I can tell you what a strike is and what a ball is. Are you still against it? I don't want it, Tony. I don't want it. That's I don't fine. want it. That's I just fine. don't. So just say you're against it. Yeah, yeah, I'm against it. There you go. Johnny's stuck in the 30s. <laughs> All right, it's time for Know Your Cubs. You ready, Johnny? Here's speaking of, uh, speaking of uh, long history, in 140 years, Johnny, how many times have the Northsiders reached the postseason? Oh, the postseason? Okay, oh, the postseason. That, that's, yeah. a, that's a tough Johnny, one. Johnny, it's, it's not a lot. It's not high like you would think. Oh my gosh! The postseason. I would say, all those years, they, I would say uh, they've reached the postseason a total of twenty-three times. God, that is close. That's yeah, really close. I'm going to say that's a win for John. Yeah, it's twenty-one. The answer's twenty-one. Wow. That's a wow. win for you. That's, that's a win. A win. Right. That's a win. Well, uh, okay. How many World Series titles have the Cubs won? The Cubs have won three World Series titles. Johnny is on fire. Okay. Johnny, I added this question late because Tony and I were talking about it earlier. What island did the Cubs play spring training games on? What what island? Yes. Johnny, you're so, you're from Southern California, Johnny. What Johnny, island? It's an island in Southern California. You can get there from Long Beach. I did it. Long Beach, Newport Harbor. I don't know. I think what it's a boat out to it. It's a famous island. They, the Wrigley's oh, did it. Oh, uh, Coronado? I don't know. I don't no, know. that's off San Diego. <laughs> they had a wine. They had a wine mixer there in Step Brothers. I don't remember. Coronado, the Coronado Bridge, San Diego. It's right there. This one's out a little bit. It'd be Catalina. 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 I didn't, I didn't know. I, I'm sorry. All right. I didn't know. Cubs, yeah. So the Wrigley family owned Catalina Island. The Cubs would go there and have some games. There's a field still there to this day. Okay. Yeah. I was a Cubs broadcaster in the 1930s, an actor and president of the United States of America. Who I was am I? Ronald, Ronald Reagan. Johnny, he knows his Cubs history. Which no, Cubs don't. broadcaster recently was given the Ford C. Frick Award? And graduated from San Jose State. That would be Pat Hughes. Johnny knows his Cubs. Spartan. I was the 1984 National League MVP. That would be Andre Dawson. Uh, no. no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're, you're, I'm sorry. Okay. That would be... Uh, That's a hawk. That would be Ryan Sandberg. That is correct. Who, Ryan. I, who I compare Zach Geloff to. That's right. Who won the Cy Young that year, Johnny? It was his teammate. Rick Sutcliffe. Wow. Johnny knows his 80s Cubs. All right. Let's see what else I got here. When was the first night game played at Wrigley Field? Just give me the year. First night game. I will say 1986. Oh, that's close. Close, but very good. 88. There you go. What is the name of the Cubs mascot? Is it Cubby, Ivy, or Clark? It's Ivy. Ivy. It's actually Clark. Oh, okay. I gave you. I figured that was hard, so I gave you multiple choice there. I like how he just <laughs> Ivy. Uh, who has the most home runs in Cubs history? Ernie Sammy. Banks, Mister Cub. No. Sammy Sosa. Sammy Sosa. Oh, that's right. Sosa. Does. How many? Did, how many Ernie have? Five hundred some. Yeah. Who has the most? Sosa had like six some, right? Yeah. Who has the most games played as a Cub? Sosa has five hundred forty-five oh, no, as a th- Cub. I, this is. Go back. Yeah, to Mr. Cub. Come on. Yeah. Ernie Bang. Let's, let's play two. <laughs> yeah. Who is the Cubs single season RBI leader? Pack Wilson. 191. 191. Johnny's on fire. Pack Wilson. Yep. Who is the winningest manager in Cubs history? Ooh. Oh, this is going to be. Man. Oh, going back? It's, it's not, sorry. It's like, not, do we know him? It's not Lou Pinella. It's not, it's not Dusty Baker. It's not Dusty. It's not Joe Madden. Don Zimmer. <laughs> Is it Don Zimmer? Zimmer, no. It's uh, <laughs> it was the, from the 20s and 30s, right? Regalman? Yeah. Jim yeah. Regalman? It's not, it's not. 
recall. Oh, this is bad. I don't know this. My brother's going to kill me. Who, who is it? I have no. You're saying Cap so Anson. Oh, Cap Anson. Yeah. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I have 2,038 strikeouts as a Cub. Who am I? Is it I'm their all time. I yes, I am also in the Hall of Fame. Oh, it's Ferguson Jenkins. Yeah, there it is. There you go. Uh, I am the last Cub to win the Cy Young Award. Ooh, last Cub to win the Cy Young Award. I'm going to say it is Kerry Wood. No, I'm going to go Greg Maddox. No, it's not Maddox. It's not Maddox, Maddox. Maddox was the guy to win it before this guy. This guy had from June 21st to the end of the season was 16 and one with a point eight six ERA. Jake, Jake Arrieta. That's correct. Oh, Jake Arrieta. Yeah. That Philly. Yeah. I know him as a Philly. Uh, Johnny, that's all of them because the other one was going to be who won it before him, and and Tony said Greg got it. I did better than I thought. Not bad. Johnny, besides the Padres, Johnny knows his Cubs. I was impressed. You really don't know Catalina Island and the Cubs? <laughs> you grew up in Southern California. No, like, like I said, I'm not. I'm not the brightest guy, Tony. Just not. I, the best I, I you, but the best answer though was that you just you went Ivy right away. So it's <laughs> like. like so like, yeah, like you knew it right, just hopefully it'd be right. Ivy, mean, oh yeah, great call, Johnny. Great call. Hey, hey Tony, I, I, can't wait, I can't wait to work with you, buddy. I can't wait. I, I arrive tomorrow at ten forty-five. I awesome. can, we're gonna have the that we're we're gonna have tomorrow night's game. Yep. We're gonna have Sunday's game. Tomorrow's yep. my birthday. I'm ready to rock. And we got bar- we got a Farron's barbecue, bro. We got Farron's Farron barbecue. barbecue on. Uh, yeah, Farron. Farron. Uh, Sent the, the the text, knowing we'd be in Arizona. So uh, I'm excited. I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Nothing but a big hug, and we're gonna have three days of fun. Can't wait, brother. Can't wait to see you. Are you solo today? No, I'm with uh, Vinny today. Me and Vinny. A, Sloan Park's awesome. Uh, it's amazing. I love it. Is it? it would you say the best? Uh, it it's got to be. It's up there, man. I just I just walked around this place. It was it was amazing, man. I just <laughs> I, I love it. The difference between this and, like, let's say Salt River is the fact that there's so much, like, Cubs little things that make Sloan cool because they want to make it look like Wrigley. And there's just, there's just, there's little details that make Sloan really special. Yeah, exactly. It's nice. It's nice. If you're ever out here, folks, come to Sloan Park. You'll love it. Have a Budweiser and Harry Carey's honor. See you guys. See ya. Johnny D. Hey! Well, Chris will be calling the game tomorrow with Dallas. The We're putting breakout. NBC people on the game. I think it's Jen- oh, he's doing the TV. Yeah, yeah, Jenny and Dallas are doing the uh, the the actual game against the Giants in the spring breakout game that you and Johnny will have on Ace Cast. It'll be uh, Chris and Dallas. They're gonna make Dallas work two games. Well, that's what I was told. So Jenny goes game one. Chris goes game two. That's what I was informed of yesterday. But Dallas, you're working both. Yeah. I like it. Big leaguer, you're working both. I think he can handle it. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. It's going to be great. I think tomorrow's going to be a lot of, I mean, to watch the Henry Boltys of the world, Echeverria, I'm really excited. I'm excited to see our young guys. We talk so much about them. Now we get to see them and see them against the Giants, and they're being led by one of the great leaders in American history. Fran Reardon. That's, that's, that is a fact. Look it up to those 19 aviators. It's like George Washington, Fran Reardon. I mean, you know what I mean? Oh, am I out of here? Yeah, I can keep go. going. I got a lot. Yeah. I got a lot to get. We, we got to go. We're gonna... been, I, I guarantee I ruffled feathers with gambling and changing rules. Nah. I guarantee that. Coming up next, it's the Cubs and the A's. We'll see everybody tomorrow, probably at noon. Depends on how my flight goes. We'll see it at noon tomorrow right here on A's Cast Live. If you're looking for the latest green and gold gear for the 2023 season, then look no further than athletics.com slash shop for your officially licensed gear. That's athletics.com slash shop. The A's YouTube page is your go-to destination for A's video content. Get access to great highlights, exclusive behind the scenes content, classic games, A's cast live, and more. Visit youtube.com slash athletics. This has been a presentation of the Oakland Athletics.